Get get him out of here. Get him out of here. Well, that was definitely a debate. Um, the amount of times that both uh, both candidates dodged questions. Um, it was it was understandable that uh, oh hello Archangel Decab welcome. Um, it was understandable when Kamala Harris dodged questions. I'm still kind of in shock that Mike Pence couldn't say after all like kind of after rambling about how you know they, the Trump campaign is going to win and blah 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 blah. Kind of in I'm 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 in a bit of shock that he didn't say that there would be a peaceful transfer of power if they lost. Um, which I, I guess I shouldn't be, but it seems like, um, this would have been the way to make uh, Trump seem more reasonable. Like people were misunderstanding what he was saying or, you know, whatever. Um, but no, he, he just didn't answer the question at all. Um, that was pretty incredible. Um, but overall, I really liked the energy that Kamala Harris brought to the debate. It really seemed like she was on her A game. Uh, there were a few times where she kind of slipped up or like the moderator kind of got the better of her or, um, Pence landed some blows specifically about her record, um, as a prosecutor. But overall, she looked very good at the beginning of that debate. Slipped up a little bit, got some got some dirt on her in the uh, second half of the debate, but for the most part, I think she did a really really good job. Um, she was on the offensive, she was attacking uh, the tr Trump, both Trump and Pence, um, on their records, and uh, specifically like COVID. The COVID stuff was really good uh, attack for her, um, and I think a lot of the economy stuff actually was good too. I kind of lost my mind a bit there in the middle when they started talking about the environment and Pence went from saying how we need to preserve, um, you know, oil and uh, natural gas industries uh, for the workers. Of course, for the workers, not for the, the companies or the CEOs who are making billions and trillions of dollars off of the workers' labor. No, we need it. We need those industries for the workers because... They couldn't possibly uh, transfer to a, a green energy job in the same area, um, which is what the Green New Deal actually provides for. So acting like uh, the like like when a lot of people talk about the Green New Deal, which, again, is not what Joe Biden is proposing. Um, it's funny to me when they complain about how much it costs, because a lot of the costs are going to invest in the infrastructure needed to facilitate jobs in that market. Millions and millions of jobs that need to be filled and will be good paying jobs um, and will act as a way to transfer uh, workers from the oil and natural gas and mining industries into uh, working with clean energy instead. So like that's one of the reasons it costs so much and I, I wish I wish that they could hit on that more in a debate format, but I recognize that this isn't necessarily an informative debate. It's instead a, um, it's in, this is instead a, like appeals to like emotion and use of rhetoric to convince people to get involved in the voting process to mobilize your, your base really. Um, so in that sense, I think Kamala did very, very well. I don't, necessarily think um we were ever gonna get like a really in-depth explanation about any of these topics or issues um mike pence became progressively more infuriating as the debates went on um specifically like the a couple of the questions towards the end like you know what would he do um with when it comes to abortion and um a lot of those questions were left very vague um, in his answers, and he would actually like go back later and try and answer them. Is it was messy, and I believe it was messy by design to kind of avoid having to talk about these sensitive topics too much. Um, yeah, overall, uh, good debate. 
I, I give it I give it two two thumbs up, two two peach knives up. Um I I think that we came off looking good, like the left did. Um and I think at least for, from my perspective, every time they bring up the far left radical positions in these debates, increasingly it seems to me like those positions are actually very reasonable and necessary things. Like if if I put my head in into the headspace of a normie, like the things like, oh yeah, I think everyone should have healthcare, or like um people should uh, you know, uh not have to die in floods and fires and hurricanes, uh, or lose all of their uh belongings. I think these are very reasonable things to uh connect to the average person's experience. And um the more we do that the more reasonable and understandable we make the measures taken to combat those things. Um, so, uh, let's see. Take a look at chat. It's funny he's against abortion, but Trump was infected, was injected with late-term abortion stem cells. True! Uh, that, that is actually a fact. Uh, a fact. Uh, Regeneron's um, treatments are based on stem cells. Uh, Lucky5624, can we just watch and see how two rich clowns are going to be president and two really, really bad vice presidents were doomed? I'm going back to my beautiful country, El Salvador. I'm sick of these two political parties. They want to put politics in everything. I mean, unfortunately, politics are in everything, regardless of where you are. Like, how your chair was made is dependent on politics. Um, the food that you can get on your table is dependent on politics. Um, so, like, it's really inescapable, but the problem is that capitalism is just so pervasive that, like, in the United States especially, when these people are, like, like, the actual stakes here are, like, whether or not people can exist in public, or whether or not, um, people have fundamental, like, rights to, like, be represented in court, uh, all, all kinds of stuff. So, like, a lot is on the line all the time. Though I totally understand being frustrated with these two political parties because largely they're just large bureaucracies who that full of people who might mean well, but they're functionally uh, in the pockets of very large corporations. Um, we need to uh, get money out of politics and we need to um, adopt more um, left-leaning progressive positions on things that, you know, aren't necessarily profitable, and we shouldn't leave those things that aren't profitable uh, up to capital, because capital will seek ways to make them profitable that would, and usually do, harm people, for example, in healthcare. Um, yeah, so, I guess, uh, I guess my feeling is this was a, um, relatively milk toast debate like it's something we should have expected um but it's also <sighs> it's really frustrating to see the vice president of the united states being able to just kind of lie and bulldoze over um a moderator and also just like blatantly smirk through their opponent saying things that are 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 true and good um, <laughs> lucky, true. The last debate was like an Among Us game. Uh, both both candidates were sus. Uh, though I I would I would uh, cast my vote for Airlock Justice uh, against uh, Trump. Um, Archangel DeCobb, Americans' political scene would be much easier if it required a minimum term in a branch of government before being nominated. Maybe. Um. I can definitely see, like, an argument for that. Uh, the downside being that then it, it, I, I think then the system would just focus on a lot of the smaller elections where, um, a lot of money can make a whole lot of difference in, a, in local elections here. So, like, someone, someone donates $5,000 to your local election campaign, $10,000 to your local election campaign. Um, that makes a world of difference 
And it's different if you get up to like, you know, a, a state Senate campaign, maybe like more money might make a difference. And likewise, like, you know, a Senate campaign on the national stage. Um, so, and yeah, you mean for president. Um, but like, I, I think in, in that case, like you would just see a lot more money being funneled down to smaller elections to get more, more people in those small elections in their pocket, you know, for, for down the line. Um, I'm trying to think like what, what other, what other thoughts did I have during this debate? I probably should have taken notes. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I'm just really upset about climate change. Like they're like both their respective stances on climate change are not good. Um, but I, I think that, um, Kamala Harris is still slightly better <laughs> than uh, whatever the Trump campaign has in store for fighting climate, like funding forest sweeping. That's really dumb. Um, I would like to see term limits. Yeah, there, there, are, there are a lot of positions in the United States that don't have term limits, which is why like a lot of our senators are ancient. Uh, because they've they've run in like twenty six different elections and like they've been uncontested in like you know twenty four of them, um, and also like our 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 judges tend to be appointed for life, so like term limits. I think I think term limits for Supreme Court judges would be good. Um, Yeah, the Supreme Court shouldn't be for life. Like someone, someone with like sensibilities from the 1940s shouldn't be uh, dictating social policy in 2020. Sorry. Um, All right. Do you mean the new Supreme Court nominee? Uh, no, the new Supreme Court nominee is actually a, a quite a young lady, but I mean, in like 40 years, she'll be in the same position. So yeah. Um, I, I, I mean her eventually. Um, uh, gosh. I, I really... The Fly was the real MVP. True Gringo Nut. True. Uh, the Fly, again, The Fly is going to be what everyone's talking about. I don't know how he couldn't feel that on his thinly haired head, but um, yeah, yeah, it was it was incredible to watch that thing just sit on his head for a full five minutes. Um, truly, truly appreciate it. Really uh, an apt metaphor for his vice presidency. Um, and I, I wish the fly well in its, all its future endeavors. I hope, I hope its spawning goes well. I hope its offspring live, uh, long and happy lives. Um, but I, I, I think, I think in the latter half of that debate, uh, Kamala Harris didn't come off looking super good. She had her moments, but she really shined in the first half. Uh, but the fly came in and saved the debate for her at the at the uh, middle to end. Um, like the the fly, the fly, the fly, the fly. Um, yes, a, a true shit post of a VP. Um, among among other kinds of uh, things. Maybe if the fly had eggs in his head, the brain worms would make him seem better. I mean, I, you know what? That's, I, I think, I think flies and brain worms are natural enemies. Um, Twitter's having a, f having fun with the fly. I bet. I hope, I hope somebody's made like a Grendel fly, uh, joke or a Brundle fly joke. Um, she slayed at the end there, IMO. She embodied every woman ever in a meeting full of men. Yeah, it's, um, it's just, a, I, I think the attacks on her record were really effective. Um, and I also think that, um, 
uh, specifically her her prosecution record. Um, I think that was that those went well for Pence, and I think um, I don't know. There, I, I I I think I think that there were some things she could have done better, but I really I think I think her forcefulness and uh, the way she insisted on having space in the debate um will will win her a lot of support like just the optics of that were really good how are we feeling are we are we feeling doomer did did we take a doomer pill from this debate or are we feeling good yeah exactly showing that she is not a pushover is a major major plus um, and I, I know that I, I, uh, I was talking a little bit during the debate about how I think that she can be pushed to the left. And I think that she has a good chance of, um, being more pliable than Joe Biden on a lot of issues, specifically because she has a longer, um, political career ahead of her. And, uh, she's probably looking to run for president in 2024. Um, which means that in the next four years, um, she's going to have to do things to cater to her base. And given that Joe Biden is like an ancient, uh, like, uh, very strong and virile man, uh, I, I almost said some non-flattering things. Um, given given that, I think that um, Kamala will be taking uh, like the spotlight on a lot of issues. So I think if uh, the the left can properly uh, apply pressure. Um, on social media or elsewhere, um, I think we have a good chance of putting her in a spot where she is more apt to cater to leftist positions in the future. Stuff like Medicare for All, um, expansions to whatever uh, base of the Green New Deal is put in place during the um, Biden presidency, um, all that stuff. But first, we, we, gotta, we gotta ride with Biden, okay? We're, we gotta ride in with Biden. Uh, and, uh, that means we all need to vote at the, at the end of the, uh, debate, she, she was giving the message about voting. Um, and I, I, I felt like that was kind of a weak response to, uh, what if there's no peaceful transfer of power? Um, but it, it really is the, the number one thing right now we can do is show up en masse to vote for Joe Biden. Um, the more people we get to vote for Joe, the greater the mandate of the people that he gets when uh, the votes are all tallied up, uh, the less chance there is that any kind of attempt by the Trump administration to hold on to power will fail. So even if you're living in a safe state that's blue, even if you're living in a solidly red state, even if you're like feeling conflicted with the morality of your vote, uh, vote for Joe Biden this time. Just do it. Like this. This is this is the one time out of all of the elections you should be swallowing your pride to vote for Joe Biden. Um, her mentioning expunging marijuana convictions is a big deal too. Uh, yeah, true. Um, I believe they clarified that a little while ago that they were going to be doing that, um, which represented like a a, a turn from the, I believe Joe Biden was previously having a more hardline stance on it. Um, but marijuana legalization and expunging marijuana convictions would be huge. And also, um, the amount of money generated by that would be, um, immense. We could probably fund a whole lot of, uh, the social programs that people are complaining about being too expensive right now with just the money from, uh, nationwide marijuana legalization. So, something to think about. Um, Joe has a picture holding a fly sweater now. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll put that up on screen real quick. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is good. This is good, actually.
pitching five dollars to help this campaign fly. Uh, it's such dad humor, but it it works in this one case. I'll I'll let it I'll let it go. Um, do you think that they already had this picture, or do you think that um, like they they just took it like impromptu? Either way, I'm I'm a big fan. His his face holding that swatter is just perfect. Um, this is the biggest election in all of our lifetimes that actually matters because if Trump gets reelected, he is going to appoint himself president for life. I don't think he is going to appoint himself president for life, like explicitly, but it will be the kind of thing where like, oh, election season is coming up again. Oh no. I, you know what? People love me so much. I'm just going to run again. Um, like that, that's, that's how I think that this would go. I don't think he would just be like, I'm president forever now. Um, I don't think that would fly, uh, with the American public, um, en masse. I, and I don't think it would fly with the military either. Um, but there are ways, there are ways around directly, uh, achieving the same effect without directly, um, stating it. Uh, dumb Facebook memes, like the fly help with the normies, to be honest. You know what? It's true. Um, like, my my mom now, bless her heart, um, has discovered that when you watch cute animal videos on Facebook, it then cycles into another cute animal video on Facebook. So, like, dumb jokes are now uh, going viral among our older our older population. So, like, stuff like this is going to is going to actually hit a lot of uh, people in like Gen X or boomers um, pretty, pretty effectively.